This is the second lecture on Pleistocene glaciation. Now we're going to talk about the growth of alpine glaciers in high mountain areas during the Pleistocene. And uh, what we want to do is show you uh, uh, the scenario of how alpine glaciers carved out drainage basins in high mountain areas. And so we're going to start with uh, an image uh, before the onset of a first glacial cycle. So we've got a mountainous area and tributaries joining one another to, into the main valley. And so this tributary or stream network in a mountainous region becomes totally transformed. And so here we've got the height of a glacial cycle right, during the Pleistocene. And uh, glaciers wind up filling the low spots in high mountain areas. And, you know, and so they're filling up the tributaries, right? And the tributaries are now feeding the, what was once the main river valley. So you wind up with uh, small tributary glaciers feeding into much larger ones. Now, after glacial retreat or melting, you know, during an interglacial or like the Holocene today, uh, what we see today in, in, is uh, a, a series of erosional uh, landforms, you know, key evidence, telltale signs that this area was once uh, covered with alpine glaciers. I want to go over some of the key uh, erosional landforms left behind uh, by alpine glaciers that you can see today. A first uh, landform is called a cirque, and actually a lot of these terms are French uh, terms, you know, coined by uh, French glaciologists studying these, you know, landform features well over a century ago in the, in the Alps of Europe. And uh, cirque is uh, French for amphitheater, you know, circus, circus amphitheater. Really what that is, you know, kind of a circular space for people to sit in. And so... Uh, it's a cirque is kind of a circular or scooped out area or a bowl-shaped depression at the head wall of a river valley. And so that's where the erosion begins you know, with an alpine uh, glacier. And you can actually call this a cirque glacier when they're small and just beginning in the high mountain area. Now we've got a picture here with, you know, during an interglacial and, you know, the ice has all melted back. And what you wind up are these, you know, high mountain areas with scooped out circular depressions called cirques. And uh, I've just got a couple of examples. They're, you know, they're all over high mountain areas on Earth. But here's uh, some cirques in the Scottish Highlands. You can see these scooped out areas. Now you can see cirques uh, in, you know, many of the high mountains of the western United States, you know, in the Rockies and up into Canada. And here's the mountain range in Utah. And here we've got three little cirques right here in the Wasatch Mountains. Uh, cirques in Sweden, you know, associated with the Scandinavian uh, ice sheet and, you know, individual mountain glaciers that grew there. And so there's some nice examples. Look at them all. <laughs> They're everywhere. Now, uh, another landform is pretty easy. It's called a tarn. And again, again, that's a French term. And it's nothing more than a high mountain lake where water has accu accumulated in that cirque basin. And so here's a tarn here. And uh, the Cascade Mountains, you know, Cascade has several national parks and of course you know, they're they're 14,000 feet high and so there are many uh, glacial features there and here's a beautiful example of a cirque right in one of the Cascade Mountains in Washington state all right another landform is a french word a ret a ret is uh, french for knife and these are uh, sharp all right, uh, sharp crested divides by glacial erosion on both sides of a mountain. Uh, particularly, here's here's what we're re representing here is a, an unglaciated mountainous region. Now, remember what a divide is. It's the highest elevation in an area dividing rivers. And, and you know, in an unglaciated area, normally the divide is round crested. And what glacial erosion does on both sides of the divide is, er is erode it until you wind up with a, a classic alpine uh, landscape. And that is a narrow, sharp crested divide. And so we have arets everywhere here by glacial erosion on both sides of, of, of the divides. And uh, here's the, uh, the Grand Tetons in Wyoming. And there are just arets everywhere, right? I mean, actually, the, the summit, right? You can't even walk on it. It's sharp, narrow, all right? And so there was a glacial erosion on the backside. And then here there were some uh, alpine glaciers uh, moving on down. And again, the divides are now uh, arets, right? You know, created by the erosion of all of these alpine glaciers 
moving down the valleys and eroding the valleys. Yeah, here we are. Uh, again, in Washington State, there's another big mountain range of the Olympic Mountains, and it's a national park. This is a beautiful example of a cirque, right? And uh, what the cirque has left behind. Uh, there's a cirque on the other side, obviously. And what we wind up again is up with a beautiful example of an arete. A horn uh, is an isolated mountain peak. Uh, and that's where you just wind up having glacial erosion on all sides of what was once a, a rounded mountain. So here we're kind of showing, you know, the early stage, or, you know, before that uh, that rounded mountain peak was totally transformed into a, a rocky peak called a horn. Uh, actually, there are a lot of horns uh, in the uh, in the Alps of Europe. I mean, most of the mountain peaks that you that you'll probably visit, you know, in your travels are horns. Uh, this is the most famous horn of them all uh, near Zermatt uh, in Switzerland, and this is called the Matterhorn. But if you ever go to Interlaken, there's the Schilthorn and, and so many other horns. Uh, another, uh, there are horns, you know, in, in, in uh, high mountain areas. I mean, of course, in the Himalayas, there are tremendous horns. But I just want to give you another example of one that's pretty close to us in Banff. Right, and so Banff, uh, British Columbia, has a, is has many glacial features, and there's another nice example, pretty close to us in Canada, uh, of a horn. Another classic uh, alpine glacial landform is a U-shaped valley. Now, the, the glacier takes what was once a river valley, which was originally V-shaped. So here we've got a river and a drainage basin, its stream network. And what alpine glaciers do is just totally transform that drainage basin right into a glacial basin. And so what we wind up with uh, are valleys now that have been eroded into the shape of what was once, you know, a, the shape of an alpine glacier. And so a classic feature right, are U-shaped valleys right in the shape of, of the glacier. Now today, you know, after deglaciation during an interglacial period, usually what happens is the river, all right, you know, a river will reoccupy that low spot in the landscape. And these rivers uh, in U-shaped valleys are called misfit rivers, misfit, because uh, they're flowing in a valley that they did not create. All right, so this was definitely a, a created by an alpine glacier. We've got a misfit river. And also, uh, you've got misfit rivers, too, uh, filling in the smaller tributary U-shaped valleys, too. And so, uh, yeah, here's some examples. Uh, you know, many fine examples uh, in the in the Rocky Mountains. Here we are, uh, of a U-shaped valley and a misfit river in that U-shaped valley in the northern Rockies uh, near Red Lodge, Montana. Now, in, in Switzerland, oh my goodness, U-shaped valleys everywhere. Uh, uh, they're they're kind of also referred to as glacial troughs if they're not, you know, particularly exactly rounded. And so you'll find a lot of these U-shaped troughs in Switzerland. And again, uh, here you know, there's a national park, Glacial National Park, in northern Montana, actually, just, just south of Banff in British Columbia. And there are many glacial features here. And uh, there's a, here you can actually see a nice example, another one of a U-shaped valley. Okay, you know, associated with the U-shaped valleys are something called hanging valleys. And this is when uh, the tributary glaciers, right, did not erode as deep as the main glaciers because these tributary glaciers were feeding ice to the main glacier, and that's why it's larger. But again, we wind up with misfit rivers reoccupying these low spots. And so where you had a tributary glacier that didn't erode as deep as the main valley, the rivers now, these misfit rivers, are left hanging. And so it's often the site of waterfalls today as these tributary rivers are now kind of flowing right off the cliff edge of the U-shaped valley. And I, I can't tell you how many fine examples of hanging valleys there are in, in the Alps of Europe. And again, this is in Switzerland in a glacial trough and just these massive you know, waterfalls ha left hanging. There are just kind of two, maybe even three in this one picture. And uh, oh, uh, well, closer to home, the famous Yosemite National Park in California in the Sierra Nevada Mountains. It's, a, it's really one of my favorite national parks. And Yosemite Valley uh, is a U-shaped valley. Here it is right here, right? And uh, 
it was, uh, well, today it's occupied by the Misfit River. It's the Merced River, right? So it's definitely Misfit. And, I mean, the iconic feature of Yosemite National Park is Half Dome. And Half Dome, before glaciation, was a full-on dome. It was a big domal mountain. And the glacier came on through and carved that mountain in half, right? And now it's just half of a mountain or half of a dome. Now, if you ever go to Yosemite, uh, there are waterfalls left hanging, right? And so here's, you know, one one of probably more than a dozen, you know, waterfalls in Yosemite National Park, and they're all hanging valleys, you know, uh, just, you know, where the rivers, you know, are flowing down into the deeper uh, U-shaped valley. Yeah, and, you know, hanging valleys are really common. I mean, you'll see all these features in really high mountain areas if you, you know, start traveling the world. But in the Andes, uh, here's a nice example of an active glacier, right? But this one uh, is a tributary glacier, not cutting as deep. And it's, a, it's kind of melting on back, and we've got a beautiful example of an active, you know, hanging valley in, in the Andes of uh, Patagonia, uh, Argentina. All right. So those are just some of the classic erosional landforms of alpine glaciers that you'll see once the glaciers, you know, have melted back. Now, as you can see, uh, those alpine glaciers are tremendous ero eroders of the landscape. And eventually all of that eroded material becomes deposited, uh, mostly as moraines. So I just want to introduce you to two other kinds of moraines. Uh, what you'll find are lateral moraines, right? And this is just, you know, uh, bay, you know, debris, boulders, cobbles, all, all the way down to sand, silt, and clay, just carried along the sides, right, of, of the glacier. So there's lateral moraine as the, as the, the glacier is carving that pre-existing river valley into a, you know, a U-shaped valley. And then another uh, moraine is called a medial moraine. And you know, these are most prominent in active glaciers. Uh, so there are a lot of active glaciers if you ever... Uh, visit uh, Alaska, and you'll more than likely see medial moraine. And the way medial moraine forms is when you've got two tributary glaciers meeting, and the inside lateral moranes wind up joining, and, they, and the, these glaciers are moving and flowing, and they join and wind up forming uh, a dark band of, you know, of moraine down the middle of the glacier, and that's a medial moraine. And uh, here's just some examples. Here we are in the Alps of Europe. And look at this moraine. This is what I've been talking. This is what moraine is, okay? It's just debris, kind of bulldozed and eroded and carries. So you got boulders and cobbles all the way down to silt and clay and, well, also trees, too. <laughs> and here we are. This is an aerial view of an active glacier in Alaska. And this one has double medial moraines. So, you know, you can have, you know, uh, more than, you know, more than two tributary uh, glaciers meeting. And so we've got beautiful examples of double medial moraines. And also, uh, we've got some lateral moraine here. End lecture.